Thank God. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn to Acts chapter 12 and verse number 7 and Acts 16. We're going to be looking at text. Thank God, Brother Ross, good to see you. Glad you're here tonight. Thank God. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shone in the prison, and it smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And his chains fell off from his hands. And then Acts 16 and 25 and 26. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all of the doors were open and every man's bands were loosed. And so I want to look at this thought tonight. I feel like that God is able to just help us. And this is an old story as we've heard Peter getting delivered out of prison, Paul and Silas being in prison. But I really just want to focus on one thing, and that is that when chains fall off, when chains fall off, let's ask God to help us tonight. Lord, I'm praying for someone. Maybe the chains have them inbound even tonight. That some way, God, they can see that you can release them, that you can set them free from every chain that has them bound. Every one of us tonight, we're here because one day you broke the chains that bound us. And so we're praying for someone to be liberated tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. It's time for us to see some chains fall off. Not only... For the first time, but even as we live for God, there are times that chains can begin to entangle us with the things of the world and the cares of life. And so it's time for some prison doors to open. It's time for some bonds to be loosed, some chains to be broken. And in very fact that you are uh, been going through some dry places ought to uh, drive you to that place that God, I want a fresh touch of your power. I want to break through and really and truly I want God to break in so that he can uh, help me to break through so that I can really break out of the situation that I'm in. So we are not here to impress anyone. We're really here to let God do what only God can do. And every one of us needs a breakthrough. Maybe we're in a situation that we don't understand why we're even there, but we just know that I'd like to break out of this place where that I'm at. I want to change in my life. And the very fact that you have been uh, uh, searching and reaching for something is evidence that you're at the right place so that God can do what only God can do. And so we can... um, can't expect to come to church and do the same thing that we've ever always done and then expect God to do something miraculous. Somewhere we have to come to church with the attitude that God, I am going to expect something more. I'm going to press for something more and He can do it. Some way you have to kind of break out of your box and it's not easy, especially on a Wednesday night, to break out of your box. But really and truly, you have to take that step of faith and you just have to say, I'm going to step out in faith and believe that God is going to help me. Look, we really talk about revival. We uh, sing about revival. We worship about revival. But the truth is, is that to have revival, you have to... uh, understand that I've got to break into something new with God. Revival is is getting revived and getting refreshed. And so it's time to get out into the field so that there can be revival because God gives revival to those that seek after it and those that are reaching for it. And so the devil uh, is going to um, do his thing. We just have to accept that he's out there to try to hinder, to try to uh, keep God's will and purpose from being done in our life. The flesh doesn't like the price tag that is on revival. There's a price that you have to pay to see revival happen. But if we will get in step with what the Spirit is saying, thank God, when God wants to give us a a mighty outpouring of His Spirit, God really does know how to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And so it comes to as no surprise that at times we find ourselves in some places like Paul and Silas found themselves, and that was they were bound up. They were in the inner prison. That was a, a us. It's not a literal prison like they were in. We're not literally bound up with change like they were bound up, but uh, circumstances and situations in our lives, and we find ourselves getting bound, and, and God can uh, help us to break free of everything that in bonds 
and binds us and chains us to uh, the cares of life. And so we have to have a promise that the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church. I know that I can overcome. I know there's power available to me. But <laughs> life struggles can uh, many times prevent us from really uh, understanding that the way that the devil is trying to bind us is just, just with the cares of life and with the financial problems, with uh, trouble in our home, with um, cares and all the things that go with just living in the world. And so all God needs is for someone to believe that, that He is more than enough to do whatever you need Him to do. And what the Bible says, then, and to just understand that there is no weapon, there is no uh, snare, there is no thing that the devil has out there, thank God, that is formed against us, that can prosper if we will walk with God, if we will listen to His Spirit. And so don't be weary in well-doing because God is going to bring again uh, His power to help if we will just trust in Him. God is going to bring us out if we can just walk closer to His purpose and His will. And so it's not time to be having a nervous breakdown. It's not time to be having a pity party. And it's not time to get down in the mully grubs. It's really time to look up and rejoice and say, I know my God is able. The devil is always going to be doing his thing. But no matter what he does, he is not going to be able to prevail against the church. God is always a step ahead of the devil. And so the, the devil can't win. And sometimes we uh, give in to all of his doubts and all of his fears and all of the pressures that are coming. But in due season, if you will, you're going to reap if you faint not. And sometimes you just have to understand, I know I'm going to come out. I know it's going to work it all out. If I'll just press and if I'll just hold on to God. And if Paul and Silas could have a revival in the jailhouse at uh, midnight, uh, what can God, we expect God to do for us if we would just kind of focus on Him? It looks, the, the devil knows that he can't stop what is happening inside these four walls. I mean, you know, when we get together, we begin to worship God. He would like to hinder, but it doesn't take long for a few calling on the name of the Lord, a few worshiping towards the Lord, and, and the devil's out of here. You know, he can't stand in the presence of God. And so we have our confidence in knowing that, hey, this is a wonderful place. We can come into the house of God, and, and the presence of God can be here, and, and God can do some wonderful things. And so he knows he's no match for the power of God when we get it to moving in our midst. And so his only hope is that he can just keep it in here. You know, he just wants to contain us. He can't control us. He don't have the power over us. And so all he tries to do is contain us. Just have church when you're at church. But don't take church outside these four walls. Don't get so excited about the Lord that when you get out there that people are still feeling the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is still working in your lives. And so he knows that... All he can do is hope that we just won't let it be there. Don't let anyone start telling their neighbor about what God is doing for them. Don't uh, let any saint of God begin to lay hands on the sick. Thank God, every believer, you know, you can actually see somebody sick and lay hands on them and pray for them, and God can raise them up. Thank God, don't let us start using the name of Jesus outside these four walls to come against the enemy of the church and of the souls of men. And so don't start having prayer at home. Don't start uh, teaching Bible studies. He's all, that's where the devil is trying to limit us. And so we've got to understand, we've got to get beyond these four walls. We've got to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. The devil has got his, um, us convinced that we can't uh, do anything, uh, but the truth is that we can do whatever God would have us to do. There's greater power in us than power that's in him. And so we are all uh, called to be more than conquerors in him and so we all can get caught up in the cares of life and the little problems of every day and get bogged down with these things and some way we've got to make God the center of our lives and make him the focus of what we do and understand that if I have God and I got everything that I need that he can make a way in every situation this is more than just a Sunday and Wednesday religion you know some people they have church on Sunday they have church on Wednesday and when they leave the church then church is over but I'm telling you, he never intended for church to be just something we did on Monday and Wednesday, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want to know that he is good and he's able. 
There was nothing that Paul and Silas could do to free themselves. They were in the inner prison. They were in stocks and bonds. They were going to be there. There wasn't any way that they were going to get out of that place. But they could do something that would get God's attention. And so the Bible says at midnight, they begin to pray and they begin to sing praises unto the Lord. And uh, there, was, there was nothing they could do but just pray that God would just kind of show up and minister to them. And so God could break into that place and they could just break through to feel in the presence of God and begin to worship Him. And so in two men in a prison with their backs beaten began to just get their mind off of their problems, get their mind off of their troubles, and suddenly they began to worship the Lord and something beautiful began to take place in their life and there was nothing but just reaching for God. I don't know that... Um, what you're up against tonight. I don't know what your struggle is with. I don't know what the devil's been telling you. I don't know how hopeless the situation seems tonight. But I don't think any of us are in any more hopeless situation than they were. And uh, I want you to know that if you will begin to get your eyes off your problem and begin to get your eyes on God and just begin a little praise come into your heart, you'll be amazed at what God can begin to do and how that He can let the chains fall off. And really and truly, that's what it's all about. It's when chains fall off, suddenly you realize that, hey, I'm free. I don't have to be the slave of sin anymore. I don't have to be the slave of drugs anymore. I don't have to be the slave of alcohol anymore. I don't have to be the slave of cares and worry anymore. I can put it all into God's hands. And so God can break in, thank God, and He will break you out. If you will just let him break into your situation, he can break you out of your dilemma. He can bring you out of your despair. All God is waiting for is for someone to start um, lifting him up and someone to start focusing on him. And we need to understand that God is more than able to help you out of your situation tonight. All he is wanting and all he is waiting for is for you to do is to cry out to him and just say, God, I yield to you. I surrender to you and let him begin to work. And it's all in calling on his name. That is no name like his name. The devil trembles at his name. Sickness is healed at his name. Depression flees at his name. Problems become small in his presence as we call on his name. And so no matter what's going on in your life tonight, if you will just lift up your voice and you'll begin to call on his name, he will show up. And he will do amazing abundantly above what you can ask or think. And so in the darkest hour of your dilemma, if you could just lift your voice and just begin to call on the name of the Lord, he's going to hear and he's going to help. We sing the old song over or we sing songs over and over so that uh, we can get blessed. And every time you sing it, if you get your mind on it, it just kind of gets better and better. But when you say the name of Jesus, all heaven comes to attention. When you begin to call on that name, everything that is in heaven becomes at your disposal. And then he just says, now just ask whatever you will, and I'll give you whatever. Like um, a brother preached last night about just asking. And so our God is more than enough, and the chains start breaking. And what we need is for um, chains to fall off of those that are imprisoned by whatever has them bound tonight. And there is a God that is more than enough to do whatever you need Him to do. And there are people that have prayed. There's people that have uh, stood in the gap and God has responded to your prayers and God has heard your cry and He is ready to do above and beyond what you've asked or think. And then uh, we need to just start singing uh, the songs of victory because God is more than enough when we pray things begin to happen and God begins to work beyond what we could even ask or think the old song says um, he brought me out of the miry clay he set my feet on the rock to stay and he is able to do that tonight God is looking for one that will just give him a senseless praise no uh, logic behind sometimes when we come to church and we begin to praise God it doesn't make sense to praise God when everything is going wrong it doesn't make sense to trust God when uh, the doctors are saying there's no more hope it doesn't make sense to just keep believing that God's gonna make a way when everything says there is no way that you're gonna make it but sometimes it just 
is what Paul and Silas did. It didn't make any sense to anybody for them to be singing and praising God in the condition they were in. That didn't make a lot of sense. It was senseless praise. Why would you be praising God after your backs are beaten, you're in prison, nobody's going to go your bail, nobody cares about you, you're forgotten and no hope for you. But the truth is, is they just began to give praise when it didn't make any sense. And because of that, the Lord sent the earthquake and he sent uh, the, the chains falling off and he sent doors swinging open. And the whole, all of it was because um, they just began to sing and they began to praise God and God began to move. What so many times God is looking for is someone that will just be willing to give him some senseless praises. God is looking for those that have come to the place where that no matter how bad it gets, no matter how hopeless it gets, no matter what uh, the devil is whispering in your ear, I'm going to keep on praising God. I'm going to praise Him in the good times. I'm going to praise Him in the bad times. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to keep on praising Him. Look, you will never do a good thing and do the things of God if it only makes sense to you. So many times what God asks us to do doesn't make a lot of sense. But somewhere you just have to go ahead and do it anyway. It doesn't make a lot of sense for uh, the Lord to spit in some dirt, make some mud balls, stick it in a man's eye, and tell him to go down and wash. But he did it, and his eyes were open, and he could see. And so sometimes it's not that it makes sense. It's just that you get obedient. God, whatever I've got to do, I'm willing to do it. There are people here tonight that you're going through some rough places in life. Think of, life has dealt you a bad hand. Uh, life has uh, given you a hand that's not really fair. Many of you are getting things happening in your life that you really don't deserve. Really, you didn't do anything to get in the dilemma you're in. You didn't really do anything that would cause you to uh, be reaping the kind of things that you're reaping. But for whatever reason, you find yourself in a rough place. But in spite of all of that, thank God. You, you drug yourself here to church. You got here. And because you have gotten here, and suddenly you begin to give praise to God when everything says that, uh, why are you praising God? But something just says, I'm going to give Him praise anyway because He's God and He's worthy of all my praise. But that is what God wants you to do. Give Him some praise. Give Him senseless praise. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. There are times you just have to... Bless the Lord when there is no logical reason why you would want to be worshiping the Lord. When you wait for God's, um, uh, when you want God's attention, there's no better way to approach Him than just to begin to praise Him because He dwells in praise. And ever how much presence of God you want, you can have by just beginning to praise Him because the more you praise Him, the more that He's going to be present with you. The psalmist said it like this, in Psalms 100, verse number 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Praise God. And so tonight we have a right to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. We're here tonight because of the grace of God. We're here tonight because of the mercies of God. We're here tonight because of the long-suffering of God. If we got what we deserve, we'd all be dead. And we're not because His mercy endures forever. And so we're here tonight as sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with some thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to every generation. While we're standing tonight, I just want to remind you that there's a God that wants to break the chains. There's a God that wants to set you free tonight. There's a God that has brought you here because He wanted you to hear.